What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tyron Johnson Show. I'm Tyron Johnson, professional basketball player in France, currently playing for Adia Blois. It's been a while that I haven't posted a podcast, an episode. I took some time to get to myself. I took a lot of time to focus on, you know, what I wanted to do in my life, how I wanted to spend my time. Because I am in the middle of the season, and I've been going through some, some tough times. And, you know, I just, sometimes you got to really, really disconnect. Today's episode is about appreciating the tough times. Tough times come and go. That's one thing I know for sure. Tough times come and go. And the last six months, I've really been through some tough times figuring out life. Because... I'm at a very strange point in my career where I'm 34, approaching 35, and it's getting to the point where I don't know what I'm playing for anymore. When I was young, I played to get to the NBA. Okay, I realized the NBA was off, off, the, off, the, off, off the board, so I'm going to play to get to the EuroLeague, which is the top league in Europe. Okay, I'm at 34, I feel like that's off the board. Now I'm going to go to France and find a small team and will them to a championship. Done that. Uh, I'm going to go to France and try to do the same thing in the first division. We're not close. <laughs> We're not close. And it's gotten to the point to me that it's like, what am I actually playing for now? It's like nothing is driving me. I don't have that driving force. I don't have that driving factor where I was pushing to get to the NBA. I was pushing to get to the EuroLeague. I was pushing to win these championships. I was pushing to make history. But now I've gotten here and it's like, what now? There's no more challenge. But going through these tough times, I figured out that it is a challenge and it is something that I can push towards. And it's giving back. It's now I'm a 13 year old vet. Um, not 13 year old, 13 year vet. And I can give back the game. I can help younger players. I can inspire younger players. I can be an example for what I want to get into in my next career. Whether that's coaching, whether that's public speaking, whether that's mentoring, whatever the case may be, I can still play at a high level to show players what it takes to be at this level and be consistent all these years. So now I went from a goal that's externally pleasing to everyone else to a goal that's internally pleasing to myself. Because it takes a lot of daily habits to be consistent at 34 years old and be a professional basketball player. It takes a lot of daily habits to come in every day and focus and be ready and know the scouting report and be in tip top shape and still be skillful, not get injured. It takes a lot of hard work to keep your mind sharp. And I can help younger players develop that at a young age. So whenever they get to my age, they're already prepared and they can play basketball for a long time. So that's my new challenge. And that was a tough time because it was a transfer in energy. And I'm being honest, I didn't really know how to deal with that. But now I have come into peace with that. And... That's why I named this episode Appreciating the Tough Times because I couldn't appreciate me becoming this mentor because I always was going to be it. But I couldn't appreciate what I'm about to do in the future had I not, not, not gone through those hard times. Most people view tough times as a bad thing. Many tough times when we experience pain, defeat, anxiety, depression. I've experienced all of these things in the last six months. To a point to where I thought it was over for me. And that's when I started really appreciating the tough times. 
You see, the way I see tough times, I see tough times as an opportunity. I embrace those tough moments because it's normal. I like to use our ancestors for example. Like our ancestors had tough times. Living in the Western world, the modern world, with modern technologies, these are really not tough times. This is normal. But the expectations we put on ourselves, the external image we want to give to the world creates anxiety, depression, and all of these other things that put us in a place where we feel like we're not worthy. So I try to live my best like our ancestors live with a modern swag because they had to go out and find food. That was a tough time. They had to go out and kill animals. That was a tough time. They had to deal with the rugged winters. That was a tough time. They had to deal with slavery. They had to deal with manipulation. They had to deal with so much threats around their life at all times. And here I am talking to you in front of a camera in a home that's uh, well insulated with air conditioning, heat, and running hot water, and running water, and all of the modern technology that we have, and I'm talking about tough times. I just don't understand it. Why is it tough? It wasn't tough when I was broke and I was trying to be a pro. It wasn't tough then. Oh, but because I'm a professional basketball player now, my expectations have gone up. Now I'm living in this world where, oh, I can't have tough times. I'm too good. You don't forgot who you truly are. And you got to have these conversations with yourself. You got to look in the mirror and be like, okay, I got this college scholarship. I'm starting on a high school basketball team. I'm a professional athlete now. Yeah, that's cool. But do you remember where you were when you were 12 through 17? When you was in the trenches, just looking for an opportunity. How do you get back to that person? Because that person is how you keep your career going. That person is how you find happiness every day. That person is how you appreciate the present and not worry about the future or the past. Get back to that person that was, was hustling and grinding and striving to get to where you are today. Do you know where you are today is your past life dreams? It's your dreams. It's what you work for. So don't get here and start moping around practice. Don't get here and start... You know, I'm in my feelings today. I don't want to talk to nobody. I'm too cool to be, uh, to be criticized. Like, you don't want to be the guy on the team that got the worst energy on the team. You don't want to be the cancer of the team. You don't want to have everybody around you afraid to speak to you. You messing up the energy of the team. And you don't want to be that guy. You know where you came from? Remember that person where you came from. Because that person right there, that's who you really are. This new person is the product of that person. Don't mess it up trying to be somebody else because when you get here, what you start to see is other people that got here. But they don't have the same story as you. You know, they probably been flamboyant their whole life. They probably been having millions their whole life. You, you ain't, that ain't you. Be who you are, who you truly are. And who you truly are is that person from 12 to 17 that's, that was grinding trying to get it. That's who you are. Now, how can you use tough times to motivate you? Let me give you, let me give you an example of that happened. We had a game against Poe. I can't pronounce the rest of the team, so I'll just say Poe. And my wife was in Madrid, right? She was with some friends, and I just was worried. I was worried. I didn't really know how safe she was out there. Just for some reason, I might have seen something on TV. I might have seen something somewhere, but it, it was bothering me that I'm like, man, I'm really worried about my wife, right? I'm also worried that the game is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we don't never play at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We normally play at 8 o'clock at night. So shoot around is pushed up. The game is pushed up. When I get to the gym, everything, my whole schedule, my whole routine is all pushed up. It's all different, and my wife is not here. And my wife normally keeps me in check. My wife normally wakes me up. My wife normally cooks my meals. I have none of this today, right? So I have a 
ton of anxiety to where I can't sleep the night before the game. I barely got any sleep, maybe an hour, because I was afraid I was going to oversleep, right? I ended up oversleeping. Ended up getting the shoot around 30 minutes late. Call coach. I'm like, coach, should I show up? I don't want to you know, disrespect coach. I don't want to disrespect practice. I called the assistant coach. So I didn't want to disrespect practice or, you know, make anything weird. And he said, nah, come. We understand, come. So I went there. I went to practice, and I had this very strong pain in my left shoulder to where I could not lift my arm. So I walk into practice late, and I can't shoot. Mind you, we play in a few hours. So I'm like, I'm not really trying to say nothing because I'm already 30 minutes late. And I just stopped. I'm like, bro, I can't pick up my arm. It's finished. Like, it's done. I, I, I can't pick it up. And I went home terrified that I can't move my arm. I haven't slept. I can only get a short nap. Plus, I got to eat. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to play tonight. So I got home, and I'm, 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 it's getting worse. The anxiety is getting worse because... I don't want to oversleep and be late to the game. Me, I sleep, the way my sleeping be sometimes, I would miss the entire game. So I didn't want that to happen, so I just stayed up the whole time, right? I got to the gym, I said, let me try to see if I can shoot. I warmed up, I could shoot, but it was still kind of pulling me down. And I'm thinking I've hit something, but no, I'm like, I was totally fine. Come to find out this was anxiety. This was stress. I never had a panic attack before. So I told coach, I told the doctor, I told my GM, and they gave me some uh, antidepressant pills. And little did I know, those pills calmed me down so much that I was ready to go. But something happened while I was on the court, right? I felt like I was about to die. I couldn't breathe. And the scariest thing that happened was I wasn't afraid to die. I was cool with dying that day. Like, I was cool. I was like, man, I'm good. If I, if I go today, I'm good. And I'm good with that. And what that made me realize was, bro, I got to enjoy every day. Because waking up today and I can't pick up my arm, it could all be over at the snap of a finger. And it just made me realize that, man, life is short. Your career is short. Your experiences are short. Enjoy the present. Enjoy today. I went out and had one of the best games I had all season. Because I was like, man, I don't care if I fail. I don't care if I make mistakes. I'm about to do everything I work on. And if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. And it worked. So I used a tough time to propel me to having a great game. Because tough times are not necessarily tough times if you look at it that way. If you look at a tough time as a learning experience instead of looking at a tough time like it's the end of the world, you have a different perspective. The game before that against Cholet, my auntie died. My sister called me right before the game said, Tyron, she passed. And all I was thinking was, bro, I got a, I got a game. I can't even think about it because... No matter what the situation is, you can be emotional, but you can't let your emotions take over you. You still got a job to do. So, yes, it was on my mind. Yes, it bothered me. But I had to do everything I can to snap right back into a machine and realize that I can't let the guys I've been going to work with all week down because of my own personal situation. My auntie died. Their auntie didn't die. You know, they, they're ready to play. And... That was a very telling situation because I kind of played mediocre, but when I got home, I cried. As soon as I walked through the door, I just cried, bust out, and I, I deal with depth a little different, so I wasn't really sad, but I just cried because my auntie was such a sweet woman, and seeing my family and not being around my family, and I got homesick, and I just needed to be around my family and just needed to be around everyone around that situation, it just was tough for me, so I burst out crying. But as soon as I burst out crying, it was like everything was out. Like all those emotions, all that, uh, that whole tough time for me was like, okay, she got through the cancer, it's over, she's doing better. 
in the next life than living on earth suffering. So even in her worst moments, it was a tough time, but her death actually probably was the best thing that probably could happen to her. So rest in peace to my Auntie Pat. Um, she meant a lot to me. Uh, and it was a tough time. I went to Houston last week, and I really got back on track. I really realized what my purpose here on earth is. And my purpose here on earth is to make sure that I take my experiences and help the next. I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. I was the kid that nobody believed in. I was the kid that was on the bench. I was the kid that had to make them pay. So I have to make sure that I give as much information through these podcasts, through my mentorship program, through my, my online training, everything that I present to God, to you guys on the internet so that you don't have to go through what I went through. I, don't, I got 34 years of experience that I can give you guys so that you can speed up your path. And all I'm trying to do is help you make them pay every day. If you like this episode, please subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Check out my website, tyronjohnson.com. Uh, get the ebook, How to Make Them Pay, so we can get going, man. Until next time, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. I'm out.